Beyond the Badge is brought to you by the Dinah Crime Prevention Fund. Welcome to Beyond the Badge, a program about the inner workings of the Dinah Police and Fire Departments. Thanks for joining us. I'm Officer Brian Hubbard. The Edina Fire Department is reminding residents not to pour water, flour, or sugar on grease fires. This after responding to a kitchen fire. The Edina Fire Department was called to the 5300 block of Halifax Avenue in early June after receiving a call from the homeowner about a cooking fire. The fire was already extinguished by the time fire crews arrived to the scene. However, water poured on the grease fire caused a large flare-up that damaged the ceiling. One person sustained minor injuries while trying to put out the fire. Never pour water, flour, or sugar on a grease fire. Doing so creates a much larger, more dangerous fire. One of the problems with the grease fire is when, if you were to add water, water expands at like 17,000 times when it turns into steam. And what that does is that vaporizes the, uh, the grease particles and makes the fire much, much larger. So while normally you'd think that adding water would help cool and, and put the fire out, in this case it's a bad thing. In case of a grease fire, residents should call 911 immediately and let others in the home know there's a fire. If possible, turn off the source of heat. Most of the time, that's the burner. Ah! Also, if it's safe, cover the flames with a lid or another pot and do not remove until everything has cooled. Educational requirements for police work are set at the state level, with Minnesota having some of the highest standards in the nation for new officers. Although a law enforcement degree is important in pursuing a career as a police officer, so is volunteering your time. Being a reserve or community service officer or participating in programs like the Police Explorers prepares new officers and sets them apart by understanding their commitment to the field. Let's go to Edina City Hall where Fire Captain Ryan Quinn is with Officer Richard Haar to talk about the educational path to a career as a police officer. Thanks Brian. We're here today with Officer Rick Haar. How are you doing today Rick? Good, how are you? We're doing well. We're here today to talk about how to become a police officer. What can you tell us about maybe going through a police academy or taking classes. How in fact, as one of the newest hires here at Edina Police Department, how did you become a police officer? Well, for me, my first step was getting involved with the Police Explorers program. Uh, it's a program for kids age 14 to 21 to kind of get experience in the law enforcement field. Uh, past that, I actually got hired with the City of Edina as a community service officer, and that just gave me a little more experience in how to do the job. Uh, in addition to that, another opportunity for people is to become a police officer reserve. Uh, that's another volunteer opportunity where they work out with the um, police officers, they work at extra events, and they get to go out on patrol with, with the officers whenever they uh, would like to. So there's a lot of opportunities that are available for someone interested in the field of law enforcement. Does being a CSO, a reserve officer, set you apart from the other candidates? Yes, having the experience as a CSO or reserve actually I do feel sets you apart from other candidates. It gives you a knowledge of the law enforcement world and the experiences that you gain, as well as when you're interviewing with departments, you kind of have those experiences to pull from. Sounds like there's a lot of community-based uh, pathways with the, the Explorer program, reserves, we've got community service officers. Did you find that as, as rewarding as it, as it sounds? I did actually. I found um, all the steps to be very rewarding and very beneficial for myself. Yeah, right. It teaches you everything from giving you a base knowledge to that community service side. We worked a lot of events like the 4th of July parade, the fireworks, um, 5K runs throughout the city. And so you get to learn a lot about the city, the employees, the citizens, and the job. So you've had an early introduction to what it's like to become a police officer. What type of formal education would be entailed in following that? In Minnesota, the requirements for becoming a police officer is you need at least an associate's degree, so a two-year degree, and I went straight through to get my bachelor's degree from the University of St. Thomas. I felt it gave me more uh, resources and gave me that extra level of education to keep in my toolbox. And when I graduated, I went to uh, the police academy, or as we in Minnesota call it, skills for uh, my training in that and then in the, getting in the process of getting licensed. Um, after that, it's just the whole experience of applying, interviewing, testing. Well, Rick, it sounds like you put a lot of thought and hard work into becoming a police officer. 
there's a lot of different pathways for future officers to take, and I think you've demonstrated a lot of those. Thank you very much for your time today. We'll see you on the street. Brian, back to you. Thank you, Ryan. One Program for Kids starts the educational process about public service and safety. Each year, the Edina Police Department works with the Edina Morningside Rotary Club and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund to put on the Junior Police Program. This program educates second and third grade students. Edina 16's Dietrich Nissen stopped by during one of the visits and has more on how the program has impacted local students. Ella! Edina officer Mike Seeger may have never become a police officer had it not been for the Edina Junior Police Program. I myself was a junior police officer in the 80s at Countryside Elementary School and I uh, just sort of grew up in the program and, and wanted to see it succeed so I continued on with it once I became a police officer. Good job. Be sure you had this on there too, okay? The program has been active for more than 25 years, teaching students the value of public service and how to stay safe. I think it was uh, last year in uh, Concord, we had a little girl that went through the program that uh, we actually had someone trying to get her to get into a car and she remembered from junior police to, uh, not to get in the car and to run away and she actually ran away and told a mom and we got a couple other calls about the same individual and we ended up actually catching him and arresting him. It is a program that is part of building a child into a responsible adult. Rotarian and City Council member Mary Brindle says the program strengthens the community. Just tap right there. And provides students with the opportunity to ask questions about how public service works. Um, so often there is the fear or the misunderstanding of their role in our community. So to, to give that initial understanding of safety and friendliness I think is the the overarching benefit. Together, the Dyna officers and Rotarians share the duties of swearing in these young residents as junior police. There's the paperwork. Looks good. The thumbprint. Excellent. And finally, a badge as proof of their learning. There you go. It's a great opportunity for uh, kids to interact with uh, police officers on a positive note. And for some students, this program helps them set their sights on a career in public safety. Do you want to be a police officer? You're going to be one and I grow up. You are? In Edina, Dietrich Nissen, Edina 16. For more information about Junior Police, head to the City of Edina's website where you'll find contact information for Officer Mike Seeger. With summertime underway, more residents are getting outdoors and enjoying the weather. The increase in foot traffic, however, means an increased need for attentiveness from both motorists and pedestrians. Motorists are reminded to yield to pedestrians in designated crossing points, and likewise, pedestrians are obligated to cross the road in a lawful manner. Drivers and pedestrians are equally responsible for creating a safe environment for traveling in a car or on foot. On behalf of my co-host, Fire Captain Ryan Quinn, and the City of Edina's public safety team, thanks for tuning in to learn a little bit more of what goes on beyond the badge. Until next time, stay safe.